and that's obviously knackered the pads completely and they need to be changed. Okay, so let's look at how we're going to do that and what we need. Right, okay, uh, we've got everything set up here. Let's take a look at what we're going to need. So the first thing we're going to need is some sort of screwdriver. I've just got a standard cheapo flat screwdriver here. We're going to use that to push the pistons apart. I don't know if I'll need them, but I've got a small set of vice grips. These may be useful for, say, pulling the split pin that holds the pads in place. Definitely will need um, a set of mouse nose pliers um, and a 5mm um, Allen key. We're also going to need, obviously, replacement brake pads. Now, you can buy Shimano Originals or you can buy various aftermarket. And we've also got some toilet roll. Now you will also need some sort of brake cleaning spray or degreaser. I've already done that here and unfortunately ran out, but basically one of the most important things. Now there's various types of Shimano disc brake calipers. Um, on most types you can actually remove the disc pads without having to remove the braking calipers. Unfortunately that's not the case on mine. If you look here right close up you'll be able to see the pads are here held in place with this split pin and there's not a big enough gap on the caliper between here and here to actually remove the um, pads. So that's a little bit of a problem. So the first thing we're going to do is actually remove the entire caliper. Now there's two ways of doing this on this particular model. You can adjust these points here which are screws which go in this way um, but they actually have float in them. Um, and they're designed to actually align the caliper with the disc. So I don't really want to cut those. There's another two screws here, which are um, served to just hold the entire caliper on, and there's no movement in those. So if we take those screws off and put them back on again, in theory, everything should go back in the same place. So we're going to take our five millimeter Allen key and just undo these two screws. Two screws off, and the whole caliper should just slide gently off um, taking the pads with it. So when we look at the caliper here um, we can see quite easily that there's a split pin just holding the entire brake pad set in place. So to get the pads out we're going to draw them out from the front of the caliper. As I say on more expensive better calipers we wouldn't have even have had to have taken it off. You just pull this split pin and pull the calipers out backwards. Anyway we're going to take our mouse nose pliers and we're going to just gently pull the pin which should be fairly easy, and in fact was. That's the pin um, out there for everyone. Uh, just a standard split pin. Now usually I'm told you should get a new one, but I don't have one. And then simply pushing a finger here on the back of the um, pads, gently push it, and they will slide out, as we can see, at the front. So we're obviously going to take our uh, new set of pads here from Decathlon and we're just going to take them out and have a look. In your pack of replacement pads you're going to get two pads and a spring. Uh, bear in mind these uh, disc brakes are slightly different to car disc brakes which tend not to have a spring to push them apart again. Obviously a little bit of friction on a push bike is much more significant than it would be on a car. Right, so the next thing to do is being quite careful now. We are going to obviously clean out the caliper and make sure there's no crap in it. Um, this I have already done, so I don't need to do it again. Now, you may also at this point need to retract the two pistons inside with your screwdriver. I have already done that, but I'm going to give you an example. So if I pump this up together, you can just about see the pistons moving in. Now, there are two pistons on this caliper. Um, to get them to move back, just slip your screwdriver through and then just put some weight on the screwdriver on the piston and it will gently retract just like it would in a car or any other disc brake system. So we're going to make sure that they're fully retracted before we put the pads in. Now you're also at this point, and I can't emphasize this enough, going to want to clean your um, disc with some sort of degreaser which I've just run out of but just to give you an example of the fact that I have cleaned it if I wipe it with toilet paper there's absolutely nothing okay we now come to the next stage which is to put the new pads on the caliper so we're going to take both of our new pads here 
Um, we're going to get the spring and we're going to put that on one of the pads. Now try and take care not to actually touch the surface of your pads with your fingers because if your fingers are greasy then it's going to knacker the pads before they've even had a chance to work. Put the second pad on so we get one cohesive unit with the spring in between. It's a bit fiddly when you're trying to film it but basically that's what you end up with as you can see the pads just go like that. And then we simply jiggle the assembly into place until it's fully seated home at the back of the caliper, like this. Next thing, take your ideally new split pin, but uh, for whatever reason this didn't come with a new split pin, so I'm going to use the old split pin, and just jiggle the split pin in. So now when we jiggle the pin in, we're going to want it to go between the hole in the left pad here, the spring and the right hand pad, and out the other side of the caliper. Now, the last time I tried this, it was pretty straightforward. Um, I did have to tap it a little bit just to get it through. Now, at this point, you're going to want to take your pliers and just give a little bit of a bend on the split pin. It doesn't need much, it's just to stop the pin dropping out. Okay, final step, hopefully, is to reattach the caliper. Um, so we've cleaned the disc to make sure the disc is completely clean. And we're just going to gently jiggle the caliper onto the um, disc. Um, hence the importance of retracting the pistons fully. Uh, now it's seated in place, we're just going to take our two screws, um, screw them back in, and at this point in theory, the caliper will be in the place that it was when we took it off. We'll just give them the old Ollie Epson one finger talk. That, in theory, should be job done, home for tea and medals. But proof's in the pudding, let's go outside and try it. <laughs> 